Yeah, Bev, we had some details from authorities today suggesting that flammable paint inside that wing of the hospital is the likely cause of the fire. Uh, these details, though, um, you know, it's very preliminary. Uh, they said that there is going to be a, a thorough investigation, as you'd expect, because this really is the worst fire tragedy in China for more than 20 years. Death toll at 29, but there are still among the survivors three people in a critical condition. And um, the authorities today in Beijing confirmed that that wing of the hospital in southern Beijing uh, was used to treat critically ill patients. And so these extraordinary pictures filmed by somebody in an adjacent building showing people abseiling out the window of the hospital using bed sheets to lower themselves down to an adjacent building. Others are taking refuge on air conditioning units just outside the window as smoke billows out. It's extraordinary, it is terrifying to think what these people were going through, given that most of the, the victims, uh, uh, you know, more than or 26 uh, victims so far, according to Chinese authorities, were patients in that hospital. So you can only imagine of the uh, 40 or so survivors who are receiving treatment, that many of them too were already in hospital undergoing tremendous hardship uh, for uh, their, their, their physical and health uh, issues. And then they've had to escape this fire. I mean, it is just tragic. It is an awful scene when you look at those pictures. And now uh, a lot of people in China obviously are um, asking tough questions of the local authorities there in Beijing because initially this was a lunchtime fire that uh, outside of people in the local area nobody actually knew about until quite late into the evening. And you know that's therein lies another sort of um, issue because as some of you know social posts came out about this fire that immediate reaction of the Chinese authorities is to censor and to shut it down, which really has angered a lot of people, as you say, witnessing just at extraordinary scenes. I just think, Bev, it's extraordinary that if a hospital fire claimed close to 30 lives in London or New York, uh, you would obviously have tremendous coverage and tremendous interest uh, and, and people sort of gathering around the scene. But in Beijing, China's capital, there was no government media reporting of this for the first eight hours. Uh, according to the local fire authorities in that part of southern Beijing, they supposedly contained this blaze within about 30 or 40 minutes of it starting. Uh, that was around about 12.31 p.m. And then it was only after eight in the evening that state media starts putting out headlines about this fire uh, in Beijing. So that in itself has angered a lot of people online. Um, the quite obvious censorship uh, when this initially happened. But then it was only very uh, limited details that were initially reported. We did today get some more details um, from uh, the investigators, from police. So at least uh, the Chinese government now is um, being a bit more open with uh, what they think happened. But if it did happen in a, a city like London or New York, I, I do think the response and certainly the attention paid to it would have been tremendously different. Also, too, we really haven't heard much from families of the victims. And that, too, is uh, probably being carefully managed. We have heard local reports from uh, foreign media reporters on the ground saying there are a lot of uh, police and plainclothes security people around that hospital in southern Beijing. Yeah, and of course we understand there have been some arrests. You talk about an investigation being underway. Um, are there issues around the regulations or is it just too soon to really know what went wrong and what might be happening as a consequence, what the fallout might be? It is pretty soon. It is only, you know, 24, 36 hours after this fire happened. The police in southern Beijing have detained 12 people already 
in relation to their investigation. So these are people uh, involved with the hospital. It was a private hospital, uh, but nonetheless fairly large. So it's likely we will see a bit of commentary in state media, but also uh, on social media too uh, in the days ahead. But what we have seen so far from the reaction on Chinese social media is a lot of questioning about why there just wasn't information or reporting on this fire in a busy capital city uh, for eight hours. And um, also too, on Chinese social media platforms like Weibo, even when state media did start reporting it, it appears to be rather limited, the level of discussion that is allowed. Because normally these sorts of things um, take off on Chinese social media. You would have remembered the fire in a housing compound in far western Xinjiang province, which was the catalyst for protests that ultimately ended China's COVID zero uh, campaign. That happened late last year. One of the reasons that took off as an issue is because there was so much social media commentary about that particular incident. Uh, we have seen in the past when there are other incidences in Beijing, not fires, but other things that are unexpected, there is a lot of social media commentary. Certainly a fire that claims such a tragic loss of life, you would presume, would be a widely discussed topic on Chinese social media. Mm. And yet we haven't seen this trending at the top of lists, which does suggest that uh, China's internet censors are uh, actively manipulating the extent to which this can be discussed on social media. The big fear, I think, is that it would be discussed in a way where authorities are not in control of the narrative. Yes, that is not something they like. Good to talk, Bill. Thanks so much. Thanks, Beth.